Okay. Good evening to everyone and welcome to the SPM Revision Seminar Online. And today's subject is English. Before I introduce to the speaker, for anyone who would like to ask a question answered by the speaker, please post your questions on the chat box so, can so we can read them during the Q&A session. Besides that, for Form 5 students this year, we are offering School Achievers Scholarship Award SASA. 
We do highly encourage all Form 5 viewers to submit your application through our webpage. For more information, please log on to our webpage to find out more. Today, we have Ms. Ashwari from Lecture from Faculty of University Foundation Studies as the speaker for today. I'll hand it over to you. Thanks, Mr. Mohan. Good evening to all and welcome back for our Tuesday slot on English. So with that, uh, let's start our lesson for today. All right, so welcome to SPM Revision English 1019. Uh, I hope you all all of you are safe wherever you're out and in a in a healthy a healthy with the current situation. All right. I'll answer your questions um, at later on during Q and A. All right. So for today's uh, topic, we will do two things today. One is we will look into um, directed writing, and then I'll do reading later. So for today's directed writing is speeches or also known as talks. OK, speeches are talks delivered by the presenter during formal or social occasions. So when you write a speech, there is always a format to follow. OK, there are different types of speech that you will write in your exam. So for example, you could have a thank you speech. Right, thanking your teachers or thanking the uh, school, in other words. Or you could even have a welcoming speech. All right, you could even have a welcoming speech and also a farewell speech and a social issues. All right, so these are different types of speech. So farewell speech, for example, is very common in SPM where you could have a farewell speech for your in, for your teacher who's leaving. All right. Social issues are basically general talks. All right. General subject topics. So, for example, there will be like you are a member of a society and you need to talk about, for example, if you're um, if you're a member of a um, animal animal welfare club, for example, and you will need talk about how to prevent animal cruelty. All right, so that is social issues. OK, so now. Let's look at the trend of questions or past year, past year questions. So speech or talk was known in 2002, 2007, 2011, as well as 2015. All right, so in 2002, there was you had to write about road safety. In 2007, it was referring to science reference book is useful. Why the science reference book is useful? 2011 was you're a member of a great crisis society and you needed to give a speech on how to upgrade the skills in giving first aid treatment as well as how to manage a spray. So this is a general issue. And 2015 was a farewell speech. All right, so 2021, who knows, there might be a chance for a speech topic to come up. All right. Okay. So what is the most important thing for you all to do is when you are given a topic of um, or a question on speech, you need to read the questions carefully. The reason why you need to read the questions carefully is because what you are needed to write about is based on the is in the questions itself. OK, once you're done with that, you skim through the points given, all right? So when you skim through the points given, as you do that, you need to understand them and see what do each of the points relating back to the topic, relating back to what you're supposed to write, okay? They will give you all the points and you need to organize them, okay? So how would you write a, uh, a speech essay. Okay, so this is a general format. Okay, your first paragraph 
is the first thing you need to do is you need to greet the audience. OK, that is the first thing. So you can say good morning or, or uh, welcome. OK, and then once you have done your greetings, you can introduce the topic. OK, and then in your introduction itself, you introduce yourself to your audience. Include details such as your name, position, club or department, state the purpose of your talk. So you do all this in the first paragraph. You do all this in your introduction. Then when you go into body of speech, sorry, in your, in your other paragraphs, your body paragraphs, you include all the content points <coughs> that are given and you elaborate on that. All right. So you have to, it is, it is a must for you to have include all the points that are given. That is basically where your content marks come from. Okay, and lastly, in your conclusion, you should conclude your speech and thank the audience. So this is a general format. So you can have your body, your paragraphs for your body or speech, where your content points are elaborating. You can have three paragraphs, okay? Or even if you want to have four paragraphs, by all means. So you, in total, you have five simple, short and sweet paragraphs on your speech. OK, now let's look at how can we improve on our speech writing. So first thing first, all right, your opening address. Opening address is very, very important because it is where, or it's more like, that is where it catches the reader's attention. All right. So, for example, you can say good morning to the headmistress, teachers and friends. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. All right. Or even in your opening address, you can have a question. How are you all doing today? OK, good morning. How are you? I hope you all are fine. So you can have it more when you ask a question. It and it is more like an, an engagement with your with your fellow readers. OK, just imagine when you write your speech, OK, even though you are writing it on paper, just imagine yourself actually saying out the speech in front of an audience. OK, so when you have that, when you have that, that perception in your, in your mind, imagination in your mind, you will, you'll be able to write where the engagement between you and your audience, which is basically your readers, and your readers will be your examiners, okay? So they will feel the connection, all right? Next, you introduce the topic. So these are ways that you can introduce the topics. For example, today I'm going to talk on a topic, how to prevent snatch thefts, or without wasting any more time, let me introduce a topic of my talk, which is how to prevent snatch thefts, all right? So you introduce the topic. Next, make your speech interesting. Have questions in between. All right. Are you all aware of that? Did you do you understand? Involve the reader. For example, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you all of you are aware. OK, so involve the readers as well. Involve your audience as well. OK. Now. All the content points that you have uh, that you have in your uh, which will be given to you in your question paper, it is not sufficient. You need to elaborate them. You need to elaborate on these points by giving facts, by giving explanation, by giving descriptions, by giving examples. You need to support, you need to show that you know this content. All right, so that is where elaboration comes in. All right, and whenever your ideas, there should be a smooth flow. So you can have sentence connectors where you use a linker to connect one sentence to the other. All right. For example, uh, there has been a rise in in road accidents these days. However, oh sorry, there, there have been there have been a rise in road accidents these days. For example, not long ago there was a car crash near my area. So you use for example by giving an example. So you're linking two ideas two sentences you're giving, you are elaborating on that main idea. OK, having logical connectors, that means you're using uh, conjunctions, linkers, all right, discourse markers, discourse markers. If you if you're this is um, 
basically we, I use it. It's more like besides, in addition, however, all right? And also your conjunctions, and, but, because, um, when, why, all right? And when you write your conclusion, okay, always sum up your ideas, give advice when it's necessary, give suggestions, and give your own opinion. Make it a bit more personal at the end. Okay, what do you think? How do you feel about this topic that you're talking about? All right, if it is a farewell speech, have your own personal um, personal feelings towards maybe your, your favorite teacher who's leaving. All right, so this is basically how you can improve on your speech writing. Okay, now let's look at an example of a question. So this is a, a trial paper from, I, I can't remember from which state, but let's look at it together. So as you read the question, you need to underline a few things. So for example, you are the, so I'm the president, so president of the environmental club. So this is my position, and this is the club that I'm in of your school. You have been requested by a principal to give a speech during school assembly. So it's school assembly, all right? So maybe, for me to know how to greet them. So school assemblies are usually in the mornings, all right? Unless there's, if there is an afternoon session school and maybe it's it's in an afternoon session um, event, then good afternoon. Or to be safe in case your examiner be like, what's wrong with this child? Why she doesn't know when a school assembly happens? It's okay, just say good day, all right? So good morning, good afternoon, and good day. So this is main, mainly for your greetings, okay? Your speech is in conjunction. So the purpose of your speech is basically in conjunction with the Love Your Environment campaign. So what you're, you're delivering a speech in conjunction with the Love Your Environment campaign. So I have underlined all that I needed to know. Okay, make sure you do this because when you write, you need to refer back. Okay, so using the notes below, write your speech. So these are my notes. So this is the notes given. Collect waste material and separate. Send to recycling centers or collect all newspapers. Host the competition. Do not litter. So now if I look at the first three, it looks more like an activity. Okay? So since it's a campaign and in in lies in an environmental club, then I knew then it, it kind of links that okay, so these are activities that would be carried out. So these are activities. These are activities. Then I see here, do not litter. So do not litter looks like more like an advice or a suggestion. Okay, so when I do this, I will know how to align it. So this is not an activity. This is not comes under a cat category of activity. This could be maybe an advice or suggestion. So I might want to put this in my conclusion. So I'll have three main points for my body paragraph because it's talking about activity, activities, and activities. Okay, so let's look at the uh, sample essay. So in my intro, I have my greetings. Okay, so um, sorry about that. So I have my greetings. Good morning. Okay, and then I mentioned my name. I mentioned my, my position. I mentioned which club I am from, okay? And then I mentioned the purpose of my speech, all right? To talk about activities to be carried out to show that we love our env environment. So if you look back here, so I'm going to be talking about this tree. I'm going to be focusing on this tree, all right? So, my intro. Then my body, so since I it talk about activities to be carried out, so in my body paragraphs, I'm going to be focusing on the activities. So I have point one, point two, so point one with my elaboration, point two with my elaboration, and point three. Okay, so I have used all the points that is given and I have elaborated on them. All right, and then this will be my conclusion. So my conclusion, please do not litter. So please do not litter, could be an advice, all right, or a suggestion, okay? And then you give 
All right. Your thoughts or your opinion on this campaign. All right. So this is how or, or rather this is a way of writing a speech. OK, so this is one type of writing a speech. So let me just go back to the format. Let me re-emphasize on, re on the format. OK, so when we talk about the format, OK, always remember in your first paragraph, greetings, introducing the topic is very important. Introducing yourself is also important. Include details such as your name, position, department, and state the purpose of the talk. So all these are in your introduction. You do not straight away start on the content. OK, where do you start on your content? It's in your body paragraphs. So you can, it depends on how many contents, how many points you have. You have to understand your points, relate it back to the topic, and then write it. And then in your conclusion, you conclude your speech and thank your audience. All right, so this is how you can write a speech. OK, so. So speech writing, so speech writing is first of all, you need to read the question and understand the points given. Greet, introduce yourself and state the purpose of your speech. Elaborate on the points given. Sum up your ideas in the conclusion by giving advice and most importantly, always make sure your speech is very engaging to the audience. All right, that is very, very important. OK, so this is the last part for your directed writing. OK, so from week one, I think week one, week three and um, week five, all right, this is week five. We have been doing a few directed writings. OK, so this is the last part of it. So let me just go through a recap about directed writing. Directed writing, what you need to do is all directed writings, essays, have a format to follow. Please follow the format very, very uh, carefully because there is marks for formatting. OK? Use all the notes that are given. OK, use all the notes. In other words, use all the points. All right, because this is your content. Make sure to elaborate on your points. Be very careful on the structure of your sentences. So here I would say language. Why do I emphasize on this? OK, is because um, in your exam, OK, in your exam, there are marks for it. All right, so you will have directed writing. You will have content, format. All right, so format is, I think, if I'm not mistaken, is three. Content is 12. All right, and language is 25. Let me just write it here as a bit. Right, so format is three. Content is 12. And language is 25. So this is quite a lot, OK? And as far as I have heard, as long as you write a simple sentence with no grammatical error, you are safe, OK? So you don't have to give a very complex or a complicated sentence structure, just simple, straight to the point, you are safe, all right? So as a recap, this is basically the analysis of the directed writing paper from uh, two 1997 till 2018. OK, so uh, as you can see, all right, there are, you know, as you can see here, 2016 to 2018 report has been repeated three times. I've yet to get um, feedback on 2019, but um, it, it will be good to wait because there is a seminar with the Guru Chumalang in December, uh, beginning of December. So at that time, you will, to 2019, you will know what type of directed writing is that. However, my advice to y'all is to just to go through 
all the different types of directed writing essays for your uh, paper one, just to be prepared. Okay? All right, now I have a question for y'all that y'all can answer later. This is something, a sharing, a sharing, um, more like a personal touch. Okay. In all the, all the directed writing essays that I have covered, okay, what is your favorite directing, direct, directed writing essays? And why are you comfortable in that type of essay? So for me, when I did, when I was doing SPM, because I did SPM too, my, I never liked all this letter writing because it was very, it was just so much of formatting to follow where you need to have the address, you need to have the date, you need to have, you know, if you don't have like DSL, you know, all that was just so complicated. For me, the easiest or the most, um, a comfortable one that I would prefer to write was more mainly speeches, uh, was mainly articles or report writing. So it was not so so much of formatting. So what is your favorite directed writing essay, and why are you comfortable in that type of essay? So you can type out your answer, and I'll look into it later. All right. So this is for directed writing. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is. We're going to move into reading comprehension as well as summary. All right, so reading comprehension and summary. This is your section C, which is 25 marks. So question 26 to 30, all right, is basically about, about five questions, okay? five questions and it's 10 marks. So it's between one to two marks questions. All right. And it's from easy to analytical. Analytical means it is more of hot. That means it will require your own response. And this one is usually question 30. Okay. Question 26 to question 29 is direct from the reading passage. Okay. Question 30 will have your own response. Okay, this is a very subjective matter. May require your own response. Whatever response you have has to have a link to the reading to the reading passage. You can't just give something that doesn't relate to the reading passage. Alright, so this is basically the general format. So now let's look at a reading passage with the questions. So, uh, first thing first, when you have a reading passage, what you can do is, which I find it quite useful, okay, which I find it quite useful is to look at the questions first. Why do I say look at the question first is because you see, you are having maybe, I'm, I can't remember how long is your paper, but it's very, very, you are, you have so many sections to do. You've got section A, section B, section C, section D. Section D, you have your novel to write, you know, your essay, your long, uh, the novel, as well as you do the poem, all right? And also you have summary to do. So you will take time. So read what is asked. So for example, in this one, it says from paragraph one. So when I look at paragraph one here, all right, so when I look at paragraph one here, my focus is going to be, all right, on paragraph one. one. And then what is the question? What is the elephant's problem? So I have to see what is it that is their problems. So something about drug addiction. All right, so that's the answer. So whenever you do questions 26 to 30, always don't worry because when you start number 26 here, 27 will follow suit. And some, some questions will be very kind to you or some questions that are said by the examiners can be very kind for you where they will put from paragraph two. So you look from paragraph two or from line this and that. So it's easier. I, I think when I did reading comprehension before, there was a question asked that I think I did not answer. 
whether are we supposed to answer in long sentence? So for example, what is the elephant's problem? The elephant's problem is drug addiction. All right. You don't need to give in long in a long answer. Even short answers are acceptable. All right. So these are 26 to 30. So if you look at 26, 27, 28, 29. All right. They are all referring to the passage. So it's quite direct. OK, all the answers that you need is here. All right. So if you look here. OK, if you look here, this is. OK, this is one mark. This is one mark. State two facilities. So when you say two facilities, there'll be one mark here, one mark here, two marks. This is one mark. So one, two, three, five marks here. All right. And then here, okay. Okay, and then here is uh, one mark, one mark, and one mark. So you have five, six, seven, eight. Then another two marks will be here. Give two reasons. So this is what we call POTS or more so analytical. OK, so from paragraph 11. OK, so from paragraph 11, 11, it is the memory of seeing how the hospitals. Uh, we sorry. Yeah, weans these delightful creatures of of dangerous and additive drugs. So why do you think this is the most tragic surveillance to, to, to the tourists? So it's talking about how, okay, how uh, tourists buy paintings as souvenirs, but their most treasured souvenir is not of these. It is the memory of seeing how the hospital weans these delightful creatures of dangerous and addictive drugs. A little bit short story of this passage is basically talking about how these elephants, all right, is um, they are all having drug addiction problem, and then. Uh, this particular hospital in Southeast Asia helps in, treat, in, in treating these sick, sick elephants. All right, so they explain to us how, what do they do? All right, so here, why do you think this is the most tragic souvenir to the tourists? So in other words, they're asking, why do you think that seeing these elephants being treated is most is the best souvenir ever for the tourists. So is he asking your opinion? So in this thing, if you look at this, you don't need to really rely on the reading passage. By looking at that, that phrase itself, for example, you can come up with your own opinion. All right. So the opinion that I have is they're grateful to see there is a hospital for drug addicted elephants. Or there are efforts to cure the elephants. The elephants are protected or say from their heartless owners. All right, so these are ways that you can write your or give two reasons. OK, so. Um, what you can do is. There are many reasons to it, so basically I gave you all a very a simplified version of this. All right, so what do you think? What are other reasons? OK, so I know I, I haven't put it put it up on Facebook, but never mind, I'll put it up later. But I want to ask your opinion based on just this phrase. All right. So from paragraph 11 here, it is the memory of seeing how the hospitals. All right. It is the memory of seeing how the hospitals, which means these delightful creatures of dangerous and addictive drugs. So I want to ask how Basically, I want to ask you why do do tourists feel that that seeing these animals being treated in the hospital as uh, as more precious than buying paintings and souvenirs? OK, so what do you, why do you think or, or give me two reasons? All right, so I have my reasons here. Well, what are yours? OK, so we'll well, I'll see your answer later. OK, so this is from question 26 to 30. So as a recap, 26 to 30 questions, 26. 
All right. Questions 26 is relating 26 to question 29 are all easy questions. When I say easy, it is very direct. Okay, that means it start from the reading passage. Okay, question 30, it is POTS. POTS is another word which is called higher order thinking skills. And this is very, very common now. And the uh, education ministry is trying to emphasize on this throughout. Okay, not only in, uh, in secondary schools as well as in primary schools as well. Okay, so HOTS is where your critical, analytical, okay, um, mindset comes in. All right, so where you, you think critically or you interpret or more so you give your own personal opinion on the question. All right, so this is question 30. Now we go to question 31. Okay, all right, question 31. Question 31 relates to summary writing. So when you have a summary writing, the first thing first that you really need to do is you read the question. That is the first thing. I realize sometimes people don't even read the questions. So you have to read the question and highlight what is asked for. When you highlight it, the reason why we highlight it is to make it visible, okay? Even if we just use a pencil, it, you might not be able to see it later. So you need to highlight it. You need to make it visible. Remember, you are, you will be, you know, in an exam hall, all right? Rows and rows of tables going to sit down. You're going to have your friend on each side. You're here. The examiners are going to walk up and down, all right? And then you need to see the timing. You will be, you know, trying to finish work and rushing for time. So when you highlight things, when you when, when, when I say highlight, you'll be able to refer back to that highlighted thing. You don't have to read the question again. All right. Then what you can do is you can draw a box from what line to what line. So if that say line 5 to 15, you draw a box. So 5 to 15, you draw a box. All right. Read that particular lines. So you only read whatever is written here. You don't read lines that are above five, that means one to four, you don't have to worry about, or 16 to maybe 20, that is not important. Whatever is here is where the main ideas are. And underline the main ideas, okay? So that is very important. When you're writing, when in your question, they'll say include these 10 words, okay? so. L try and make your longer phrase, okay, into shorter ones, okay? So that we a very long phrase, try and make it shorter. Try and paraphrase the sentences if possible and write in one paragraph, okay? Write 130 words. So make your aim is to write 130 words. Actually, what you're supposed to write is only 120 because 10 words are given to you already. So you just need to focus on 120 words or less. And be honest when you're writing. Be honest is in when you say 130, you say 130. Don't say 130, but actually there are 150 words because they actually count. And then when you're at 130, all right, let's say, for example, um, let me maybe draw it, get another. All right, let's say, um, okay, let, let's say, okay, uh, I've, I've written, I've written, 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 and then let's say I have my points here, okay? Uh, for example, trees should be cut to clear up the environment. Maybe that is my last point, okay? And if you say 130 words, maybe my 130 words is here, actually, 130. 
then 31, 32, 33. They might accept it. Maybe they might accept three words. But sometimes they will just put this, this line here to stop you and they might not take this, this point because it's beyond the word limit. So try and stick to the word limit. All right. I know sometimes we get carried away when we write, but when it comes to summary, make it as short as possible. Make sure you focus on the main ideas. Read, read that part properly. Read that part carefully. There might be supporting details. There might be examples given. Ignore all the examples. Just focus on the main idea. All right. Next, marks allocated. All right. Is usually it's basically your paper is um, 15 marks for summary. All right. So your content is actually 10 marks. All right. One mark per point. OK, language is five marks. Yes, this is a very small amount, but each mark counts in your SVM. OK, so let's look at the language part. So if you look at the language part, all right, so marks, uh, you will have two sections, all right? So you will have, since it's five marks, okay, five marks is divided between paraphrasing and use of English. So paraphrasing is basically one to five, uh, use of English is one to five, so uh, paraphrase plus use of English Use of English means it's all your grammar, your punctuation, your spelling, vocabulary, choice of words. OK, and then you divide it to two to get your language marks. Par paraphrasing is where we will see whether you paraphrased. You, you may want to just uh, copy everything from the, from, you, from the reading passage into your summary. You know, like the main ideas, you just copy and paste. It is fine. But as I as I encourage and I feel it is very, very important for you all to take up the skill where try and paraphrase. Just try and at least maybe you don't have to paraphrase all the points if you if you're unable to. Maybe one or two that is easy for you. So how would you paraphrase? You can see what like maybe a sentence, maybe you can change maybe the synonym of a word. All right. So if let's say the uh, the um, sorry, the the main point could be food is healthy. All right. You can say food uh, provides nutrients or food is healthy. You can say food is nutritious. All right. So you just use just tweak the word. That's already paraphrasing because you're using your own words. All right. So paraphrase is basically using your own words without altering or without changing the meaning of the original text. That is paraphrase. However, if you are unable to paraphrase or you feel like paraphrasing is the worst thing of all to do, it is fine. You can just copy the text. All, all in all, just do not, not leave this summary section empty. Try and complete it. Try and do it. OK, and then use of English. All right. Language is accurate. Language is almost um, is almost always accurate. There are always some errors. OK, language is largely accurate, meaning it's not in doubt. So these are all the users of English. This is more language per se. All right. OK, now let's look at a question. OK, so I'm going to refer to the question as well as to the text. All right, so let me go to the text. All right, so this is my text. OK, so the passage. OK, maybe I put it a bit bigger. All right, the passage is about an elephant hospital. OK, so I have my highlighter ready, so it's about an elephant hospital. Based on the passage given, write a summary of. So sometimes you will have two points. All right, two things that you need to write. So you need to give equal importance. You need to make sure both aspects are written. So what are the two things that I need to, to, to write about? 
how the elephants are treated and what tourists can enjoy at the hospital. So this is two things. All right. If let's say I were to only write how the elephants are treated and I have 10 points, it is you didn't answer the question because you forgot about what tourists can enjoy at the hospital. So you may get half for content because you didn't answer both. All right. So you need to answer both to get your full 10. All right. Credit will be given. So this is very, very important. Credit will be given for use of your own words, but must be care must be taken not to change the original original meaning. So you shouldn't change the original meaning. You should maintain the original meaning of the text, but by using your own words. OK. So your summary, this is must. So be in continuous writing form now. Use materials from line 17 to 53. This is where all your main ideas come from. So if let's say I look at this reading passage here, all right, so if I go to line 17, okay, so line 17 is here, all right. Okay, line 17 is here, so I will draw my box from here i'll draw the line that i need to till 53 then i'll go down and then 55 54 okay this is my last part so this is my box all right so this is the ending so this is where I focus. This is where all my main idea is. So whatever is before, whatever is here, I would ignore. So if you if you feel like it, it's bothering you when you write your summary, what you can do is if if you you know you can just cross out. Okay, this is not important. Okay, this is not important, and this part is not not important. OK, so this part is not important. So I am only I'm only going to focus. Uh, sorry. I'm only going to focus on the parts in the box. OK, the parts in this box. All right, so it shouldn't be longer. not be longer than 130 words including the 10 words given and begin your summary as follows so this is how i have to start with this line if i don't start with this line then for um i think for content or more so yeah for content you might lose marks and as well as uh language a little so you have to use it all right and then you focus on the main ideas for how the elephants are treated and what tourists can enjoy at the hospital. All right, so these are the two things that will be asked. OK, so you focus on the main ideas. So what what could be the answer? So. This is the answer. So this are this is for how are the elephants treated? So there are about like in here there is about nine points so since your content is 10 marks what you can do is you can have five points for for the first part and five points for the second part all right or if you want to um if you want to just if you want to say how the elephants treated you want to have six points and four points it is fine as long as you have mentioned both you are safe all right so these are the points OK, given good diets. Uh, all right, given multivitamins, do not give them ever reducing doses or addictive drugs. So these are how the elephants treated. And the next slide is tourists can enjoy. What is it? All right, so this is an example of speech writing. All right, so what is very, very important for summary writing? OK. Uh, OK, let me go back to this part. OK, 
Okay, what is important in speech write, uh, speech writing is all this. Okay, so you should read the questions and highlight what is asked. Draw a box from what what line to line. Read that particular lines and find the main ideas. Only the main ideas. Ignore examples. Okay. Ignore additional details. All right. So all of that, ignore. All right. So all of that, ignore. Underline the main ideas. Underline them or even highlight them so that you can see it. Okay. If you want, you can write it down. Write it down on the side so that you can you can use them. OK. All right. When you're writing, include the 10 words that are given to you. Longer phrases make it shorter. Try and paraphrase the sentences if possible. Write in one paragraph. Write 130 words, but you already have your 10 words, so maintain 120. OK, be honest when you're writing. OK, so make sure you you state what's your word count. Be honest. Don't worry, just be honest. All right, because you may get marks if you if you go a bit, you know, beyond that. Let's say you have your uh, nine nine points in, in within the 130 and then, you know, that the 10 point goes above, um, beyond 130 and they penalize that. It's fine because you have nine nine marks here. And then your language, maybe, you know, you can get a three out of five. You get 12 out of 15 is still good. All right. So don't worry about it. Just be honest. OK. So marks allocated content, which is 10 marks, one mark per point language, which is five marks. All right. And then how are they? How how is it calculated is through paraphrasing. OK, and um use of english so sustain all right sorry so paraphrase and use of english okay so these are these are basically i didn't go through just now it's basically uh indications all right so if let's say you get rp rp means rephrasing R O reorganizing. L L is lifting. Okay. I R is irrelevant. And question mark means it, your your sentence structure is incomprehensible. That means they can couldn't understand what you're trying to say. All right. So that is all for today's session. Okay. So what I'll do now is I would pass it over. So, Mr. Mohan, and then I will get back to you all for any Q and A. All right, uh, back to you, Mr. Mohan. Okay, uh, just give me a second. Huh? Hello there. We are the Department of English under the Faculty of Behavioral Sciences, Education and Languages of Help University. Today, we would like to present to you the Bachelor of Education in TESOL program. If you're wondering what TESOL is, it stands for Teaching English as a Second Language. This picture features our B. Ed. TESOL students together with the lecturers teaching on the program. The B. Ed. TESOL program is three years and one semester long. The final semester is when the students undergo a 16 week teaching practicum. Fully accredited by the Malaysian Qualifications Agency or MQA, this program has three intakes each year in January, May and August. 
In this program, students will gain mastery of the right pedagogy and integrative methodology, thanks to the highly qualified and experienced teaching team. The B at TESOL program is comprehensive as it contains modules that pertain to linguistics, that is the science of language, literature, the artistic expression of language, methodology, the methods and approaches for teaching language, and research, the way in which we can improve our teaching techniques. Our B at TESOL students are also actively involved in various student council activities, as you can see here. They have put on theatrical productions, carried out community service projects by teaching English classes, and organized fun language games for inter-school competitions. And the outcome of this enriching experience at HELP is that our graduates are highly employable these are but a handful of the schools where our graduates are currently employed. Some of our students are offered jobs even before they complete their teaching practicum, a sure sign of the quality of our students. So, are you curious to find out more about the BIAT TESOL program? Drop by our Help Subangtu campus or give us a call at the number shown. We're looking forward to welcoming you at HELP. Okay, over to you, Miss Aishwari. All right, um, I see there's a few questions here. Uh, so someone likes writing speech because it's the least trick when it comes to the format that is so true. Uh, someone prefers uh, informal letter because I don't have to write it in a formal language. Uh, yes, you don't have to write it in a formal language, but be very, very careful with your address and um, your signature, that is, the, that is the format there. All right, so there is a uh, question here. How do I deal with a teacher with bad grammar? She always makes errors when marking my essays. Um, this is a very, very uh, interesting question because I would say all teachers do make mistakes, but it's never wrong, all right? Don't feel like you shouldn't or don't feel scared. Just go go and see the teacher. Don't don't confront her, obviously. Just go and see the teacher. I think maybe you can, you know, you can talk in a very nice way. I think uh, miss maybe um, what you have mentioned that or maybe clarify with her. Maybe she will she will realize her mistake. And I, I'm a person who even when I teach, I do make mistakes and students should come and tell me, miss, I think there's an error here and I do not mind because we are all learning all right so as i said i'm not also i'm not a i'm not an english teacher who is uh who speaks british english every single day i hope we all make mistakes so it's no harm for you to go and see your teacher and um, tell her you know tell her nicely maybe there's a wrong there's an error there okay uh daniel you said what if i miscount the number of words try not to miscount it so have an estimation so when you write in a line okay so you have a 10 words and then you have only three three words okay it's 14 15 so try not to miscount that um your question here is the use of simply five words prohibited uh try not to use contractions like like for example isn't uh try and write it in a full full form uh, G apostrophe morning. I've never seen that before, but uh, make sure you write good morning because in when you're writing, for example, formal formal direct writing, it's all very um, it's all there's a format to it. It's formal, so do not use contractions. Write it in full. All right. And when you are writing for your direct your section B continuous writing, sometimes for stories you might want to add in a bit of contraction. You can, but not all the time. All right. OK, so uh, that is all for for today. I will post up the notes on Facebook later, so do have a look. And if you all have any questions, do let me know um, through Facebook as well. It's nice seeing you all and I hope to see you all next week. So take care, stay safe um, and 
we will see your your name sorry your name counts as one word if you have two um yeah names are always counted as one word all right any other question before i leave before we end No? All right, so I'll see you all next week. So take care, stay safe, and um, good night, everybody. Mohan, back to you. Okay, so I guess with no other, with no other questions, we'll probably end the session. So hopefully, students, you have, um, hopefully you have learned a lot, and we all have a clear thought about it. Um, and tomorrow's session will be at Mets by Miss Rani. So stay tuned and we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.